impact attenuation devices called crash cushions are widely used in highway safety applications. They prevent vehicles from impacting rigid hazards, such as bridge rail ends in gores, bridge piers, and concrete abutments. When impacted head-on, all operational crash cushions are designed to bring an errant vehicle to a controlled stop. Under side impact conditions, systems employing fender panels redirect the errant vehicle even when it strikes near the front of the device. On the other hand, sand barrel crash cushions provide almost no redirection and may not function satisfactorily for rear corner impacts. All existing attenuation systems require substantial maintenance efforts when a major impact occurs. Some of these systems require maintenance when nuisance or minor hits are encountered. This film describes the development and full-scale crash testing of a new and unique crash cushion, the Connecticut Impact Attenuation System, referred to as the CIAS. This non-proprietary system was conceived and developed in cooperation with Connecticut Department of Transportation maintenance personnel to reduce and potentially eliminate maintenance problems commonly encountered with existing safety systems. This impact attenuation device is unique in that it will trap an errant vehicle under most side impact situations. It will redirect the vehicle only when the impact location on the CIAS is so close to the back of the system that an acceptable energy dissipation response is impossible. No other crash cushion currently employed on our nation's highways offers these dual features of entrapment and redirection. The system concept is an offshoot of the work performed in developing the Connecticut crash cushion, a truck-mounted attenuator which is currently being employed by Connecticut Department of Transportation field personnel and other state transportation agencies. The favorable accident experience of the portable system provided the incentive to apply the same engineering principles to the design and full-scale crash testing of the stationary CIAS. The CIAS uses plastically deforming mild steel cylinders as its energy dissipation components. These cylinders are formed from flat plate stock and possess the advantages of low cost, ready availability, and favorable energy dissipation characteristics. The system array contains three basic types of cylinders, some with tension straps, others containing both tension straps and compression pipes, and the rest with no stiffening elements. Tension straps and compression pipes are employed in this system to develop the lateral force necessary to produce vehicle redirection when the impact occurs near the rear of the unit. The bracing in the cylinders is inactive when the system is impacted near the front of the device. The tension straps go into compression and buckle. The compression pipes separate from the cylinders at one end and carry no load. The internal bracing system is activated only under side impact conditions. Effective performance of the system is dependent on proper installation. The system must rest on a flat concrete surface. Where there is no existing concrete surface, a pad must be constructed to meet site requirements. The system array is supported on steel rails which rest on the concrete pad. These rails minimize frictional drag on the bottom of the system during the collapse process. The assembly is bolted to a structurally adequate back wall. Each cylinder is marked to assure proper identification and position in the attenuation array. Having secured the rearmost cylinders, the remaining components are properly positioned and using the pre-drilled holes in the cylinder walls, bolted together. Once the assembly is completed, a vinyl coated nylon cover is placed over the system and secured by pop rivets. The covering prevents rain, snow, and debris from accumulating in the cylinders. A full-scale crash testing program has been conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of the CIAS design. Seven tests were run at the CalSpan Advanced Technology Center, and these were followed by nine tests conducted at the Texas Transportation Institute. 
Highlights from five of these full-scale crash tests will now be presented to demonstrate the performance characteristics of the CIAS. The first test involves a 1978 Plymouth Salon weighing 4,500 pounds. It impacts the nose of the CIAS at 61.4 miles per hour and collapses the attenuator almost completely. Accelerometers attached to the interior of the vehicle record time histories of its longitudinal and lateral decelerations during the collapse process. All occupant risk values in this test are well below the guidelines of both TRB circular number 191 and NCHRP report number 230. Notice that there is no tendency for the impacting automobile to nosedive under the energy absorbing unit or to catapult over the unit. In the second test, a 4,500 pound 1977 Plymouth Grand Fury impacts the CIAS at 60.4 miles per hour on the side of the unit at 20 degrees to the axis of the system. This test demonstrates the trapping capability of the CIAS under a side impact condition. Note that the orange vinyl coated nylon cover designed to prevent the buildup of snow and ice in the unit remains attached to the CIAS and there is no flying debris associated with the crash event. Test number three shows a 1978 Plymouth Salon weighing 4,500 pounds impacting the system at a speed of 58 miles per hour. The center line of the vehicle in this test is aligned on the corner of the test hazard at a 15 degree angle with the line of symmetry of the device. Under this severe test condition, it is impossible to bring the vehicle to a controlled stop within the guidelines of TRC 191 or NCHRP 230. The crash cushion should therefore smoothly redirect the vehicle. This is successfully accomplished due to the presence of the directionally sensitive stiffening system. The system provides the lateral resistance required to push the vehicle away from the corner of the site hazard back into what would be the traffic flow. The fourth test illustrates how the system behaves under impact with a very light automobile. A 1977 Honda Civic, weighing 1,800 pounds, strikes the nose of the CIAS at 60.9 miles per hour. The kinetic energy which must be dissipated in this crash test is only 40% that of the 4,500 pound automobile impact shown in the first crash test. However, the CIAS is designed so that its collapsing stroke under this test condition is approximately 70% that of the system impacted in the first crash test. This large controlled collapsing stroke results in an acceptable vehicle deceleration response. The final test shown is a repeat of the first test. A 1979 Chrysler Newport weighing 4,500 pounds impacts the CIAS head-on at 61.6 miles per hour. This test was conducted to demonstrate the reusability of the steel cylindrical sections. The 14 cylinders employed in this crash test were taken from previously impacted units. Some of these elements were refurbished by being jacked back to their original circular shapes. Others were re-rolled. The system's response is essentially identical with that of the first crash test and proves that collapsed cylinders can be economically restored and used again in the CIAS without affecting system performance. In fact, it is expected that many restoration operations will be carried out in the field using a portable jacking system powered from a standard maintenance vehicle hydraulic system. This can be done rapidly and economically without disassembling the crash cushion. The Connecticut Department of Transportation has installed four CIAS units as of November 1984. Research personnel working closely with maintenance, design, traffic, and law enforcement personnel are monitoring the performance of the CIAS to evaluate the effectiveness of this system. This field evaluation will continue for a three-year period. The Connecticut Impact Attenuation System is inexpensive to construct. 
maintained, and repaired. It possesses unique entrapment and redirection capabilities that are not available in other crash cushions. There is no flying debris associated with the crash event. It satisfies the impact performance standards set by TRC-191 and NCHRP-230. Complete test reports, along with shop fabrication and construction drawings, are available from the Connecticut Department of Transportation. The Connecticut Impact Attenuation System is eligible for use on federal aid projects as an experimental feature. For further information, contact Dr. Charles E. Dugan at the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Crash cushions are impact attenuation devices that are employed in highway safety applications to prevent errant vehicles from impacting fixed object hazards. They work by dissipating energy at a controlled rate such that the vehicle is either gradually brought to a stop or redirected without serious injuries to the occupants. The Connecticut Department of Transportation has been involved in the development of impact attenuation devices for over 15 years. In the 1970s, the Connecticut crash cushion was designed. This truck-mounted attenuator has a long history of superior performance and life-saving capabilities. In the 1980s, the Connecticut Impact Attenuation System, or CIAS, was developed. The Connecticut Crash Cushion and the CIAS both dissipate kinetic energy by plastically deforming mild steel cylinders. These cylinders can be formed from A36 flat plate stock and are therefore inexpensive and readily available. The CIAS is unique in that it will trap an errant vehicle when it impacts the unit on the side unless the area of impact is so close to the back of the system that significant energy dissipation and acceptable deceleration responses are unobtainable because of the proximity of the hazard. Only in this case does the CIAS's stiffening system become activated to redirect the vehicle into the traffic flow direction. The CIAS is employed at wide hazard locations at narrow hazard sites, such as the ends of edge of road and median barriers and bridge pillars, a different type of crash cushion is required. Consider, for example, the blunt end of a concrete safety shape barrier. This is what happens when a vehicle impacts this exposed hazard at 60 miles per hour. It is obvious that had there been any occupants of this vehicle, they would not have survived such a severe collision. A vertically sloped concrete terminal is certainly not the answer. Such narrow hazards should be shielded with an appropriate impact attenuation device. This film describes the development and full-scale crash testing of a new non-proprietary narrow hazard crash cushion the narrow Connecticut impact attenuation system known as the NCIAS. Like the Connecticut crash cushion and the CIAS, the NCIAS dissipates energy by plastically deforming mild steel cylinders. The NCIAS has eight of them. Each cylinder is three feet in diameter, four feet high, and the wall thicknesses range from 1 8 to 3 8 of an inch. 
these thicknesses were carefully selected to minimize both the occupant impact velocity with the vehicle interior and the occupant ride down accelerations. To redirect a vehicle under a side impact condition, four one inch diameter cables are employed, two on each side of the system. These cables are attached at the front of the crash cushion to a steel plate cable support. The rear cable ends are attached to a standalone concrete filled steel tubular backup structure. Because this unique backup support is not physically attached to the rigid hazard, the NCIAS can be employed to shield a wide variety of narrow hazards in addition to the blunt ends of concrete safety shape barriers. Other innovative features of the NCIAS include displacement limiting devices, which allow the crash cushion to be compliant under side impact conditions while still possessing the lateral stiffness required to redirect the errant vehicle. And the trapping mechanism in the nose cylinder, which forces this first cylinder to deform over the hood of the vehicle, preventing a vaulting response. Once the assembly is completed, a reinforced vinyl coated nylon cover is placed over the system and secured with pop rivets. This cover prevents the buildup of snow and ice inside the cylinders. The cover is reusable because under impact, the pop rivets are designed to fail and the cover will not tear. A full scale crash testing program has been conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of the NCIAS design. A total of 11 crash tests were performed at the ENSCO crash test facility in Georgetown, Delaware. Highlights from five of these tests will now be shown to demonstrate the effectiveness of the NCIAS design. In the first test, a Mercury Cougar weighing 4,513 pounds impacts the nose of the NCIAS at 60.9 miles per hour. The crash cushion is designed to collapse almost completely under this very high kinetic energy loading. Accelerometers attached to the frame of the automobile record the time histories of its longitudinal and lateral accelerations during the impact event. All occupant risk parameters in this crash test are well below the guidelines of NCHRP report number 230. The vehicle is brought to a smooth, stable, controlled stop. There is no tendency for the impacting automobile to nosedive under or vault over the NCIAS. Furthermore, there is no loose debris flying around during the impact event. The second crash test involves a Honda Civic weighing only 1,797 pounds. It impacts the NCIAS on the nose at 60.5 miles per hour. The kinetic energy which must be dissipated in this light car test is only 40% that of the heavy automobile impact shown in the first crash test. However, the NCIAS is designed so that its collapsing stroke under this test condition is approximately 70% that of the system impacted by the heavy vehicle. All occupant risk parameters in this test satisfy the report 230 requirements. In test number three, a 4,495 pound Ford Thunderbird impacts the NCIAS at 61.2 miles per hour at the mid-length at a 20 degree angle. The cables and deflection limiting devices combine to smoothly redirect the vehicle. Another very successful test. Test number four deals with a critical crash scenario in which a 4,505 pound vehicle traveling at 60.1 miles per hour impacts the crash cushion at an angle and offset from the center line of the device. 
NCHRP report number 230 specifies that the impact angle be in the 10 to 15 degree range and requires a zero to three foot offset distance. In order to test under the most severe set of conditions, a 15 degree impact angle and the 1.5 foot offset distance were selected. The crash cushion captures the 4,505 pound mercury cougar, bringing it to a controlled stop. Note how the first cylinder wraps itself over the hood of the vehicle to prevent vaulting. This overhead view shows how the automobile is rotated counterclockwise and guided down the center line of the NCIAS. The final test shown is a repeat of the light car crash shown earlier. This test was rerun to demonstrate that the minor design changes which were made following the first light car test would not have an adverse effect on system performance. In fact, this 1,802 pound, 60.8 miles per hour Honda Civic test resulted in occupant impact velocity and ride down deceleration values, which were even lower than the associated values in the earlier test. Following the successful crash testing program, which demonstrated that the NCIAS satisfied the guidelines of NCHRP report number 230, the Federal Highway Administration granted experimental status to this new device. As a result, the NCIAS is eligible for use on federal aid highway projects. The Connecticut Department of Transportation has recently installed five NCIAS systems, and the Tennessee Department of Transportation has two installations in the Nashville area. Research personnel are monitoring the performances of these NCIAS installations. This film has introduced the Narrow Connecticut Impact Attenuation System, a new, inexpensive, non-proprietary, narrow hazard crash cushion which passes the crash testing requirements of NCHRP report number 230. It is inexpensive to build and easy to install. The NCIAS is a low maintenance device. After an impact, only the damaged cylinders need to be replaced, and this is accomplished rapidly and inexpensively. Complete test reports along with the shop fabrication and construction drawings, are available from the Connecticut Department of Transportation. For further information, contact Dr. Charles E. Dugan, Connecticut DOT's Director of Research and Materials.